What's up guys? Um, it is March 13th today. Turkey season's two days away and we are absolutely charged up here in Mississippi. But uh, one of the biggest topics right now, on all social media platforms, YouTube, um, podcast, is trapping. And trapping something that I know nothing about. So um, what I actually did is reached out to a good buddy of mine, Donald Rawls here from Columbia, Mississippi. Dude's a trapping fool. I get Snapchats from him every day of coons and possums and coyotes and stuff in the trap. So um, I was super intrigued by all that. And I, and I hit him up and I really just wanted to go along with him personally and check traps and kind of learn and pick his brain about all that stuff. But what I did is I asked him if we could film it and he was fired up for us to film it. So um, me and my wife actually just got a piece of property here in Mississippi. And um, so that's one of the things we've really got more involved and more fascinated with really just land enhancement on, on a huge scale, but especially trapping in ways that we can help, you know, fawns, poults, all of the wildlife on our property. And this is one of the one of the biggest ways, especially here since we're on turkey season. I think um, listening to Dr. Chamberlain talk on some different podcasts, um, the success rate from of a poult from the egg to adulthood somewhere around 20%. And when you think about that, we really should not have any turkeys here at all. And a turkey is something that actually everything's trying to get them. And we're humans, I've heard some people say this, humans are like the only people actually trying to help the turkey population. So um, this is why this time of the year everyone's getting fascinated about trapping. So um, let's go have a good conversation with our buddy Donald Rawls and learn a little bit, little bit about trapping. If, if you ever if you ever get into it with any type of volume, I mean, you want to have somewhere to to store your stuff. We put all our stuff up. I pressure wash it, <clears throat> clean everything up good, and then we store it. You know that when I come come back next year, and my coon traps, I paint them. You know, I love something bright, orange. This is factory white, but you can tell after you catch several of them. You know they wear it down, so we come back and we paint them orange because of visual you know a coon don't get me wrong he works with his nose but if he, he can see orange way better of course than he can see black so that's the reason we do that you can there's two ways when you put your trap down you can of course do it the old style and run you a piece of rebar which these aren't long enough but you can run you a rebar stake through there a big coyote it round and round and round they're eventually gonna pull that up you know so what I do something kind of not real new but this something semi-modern is earth anchors drive them down and driving the ground vertical when you put tension on it it sets that stake horizontal and I mean literally you take four wheeler winch to pull them up or either a puller hmm. I had to build a puller you know so they, they're tough as nails but it's just it works they can't dig them up they can't pull them up I mean so it's way better than rebar. They can't eventually work rebar out of the ground. So stay away from that. Um, all right, so as far as bait goes, I mean, we can talk about the traps all day long, but right. until there's something they want to stick their hand in there for, that's you right, catch yeah, man. They, these right here, there's, there's hundreds of options, but I keep it simple and I keep something Generally, when I set a place, like if I move in, like I trap down there at Chris's a lot, you know, they got right at 800 acres on the river. When mm -hmm. I roll in there, I'm taking five dozen coon traps. So I try to keep something that's gonna work, but at the other time, it's not breaking your checkbook. Right. You know, trying to keep it as feasible as I can, I go buy cheap cat food. It's just dry cat food. You know, it don't have to be a particular brand, anything cheap. I use cheap cat food and then, you know, I'll run like on, my, on the top of it. I'll run peanut butter or either I keep some, uh, I got some grape jelly that I put on, on top of my rim after I put my cat food in there. And then also I mix up uh, vanilla with water. And once I get the set made, I spray it down real good. And man, that, that vanilla, say something about it, it really works. Hmm. Really so, so that just gets them like in the general area yep. and they'll see the trap. That's right, that's right. Cool. Yep. Well, let's go set a few of them. I wanna see yeah. that whole process. Yeah, ain't no problem, we'll do it. So. We're here, we're going to set a coon set by a protein feeder that I've had several coons coming to. Uh, you know, as far as when you get ready to set traps, feeders are nice. You can catch coons and possums by feeders, of course, because they're attracted to them. But I don't get crazy. You'll see some people, they, you know, they'll set six around it and come back and have one coon. I don't recommend wasting traps. Put one and then try to catch predators coming to the trap 
ditches, drains, pond dams, slough edges, anything like that. So we're gonna start off by setting one here under the feeder. And what I'm gonna do, I use a earth anchor. You drive this earth anchor down flat with a, with a driver, I'll show you here in a minute. And then once you set pressure on it, the anchor turns horizontal. They cannot pull it out of the ground. Four wheeler winch or either, a, a, I've had to build a puller to pull them out of the ground. They, they're not coming out. And that's just way easier than toting, you know, if you run in say five, six, seven dozen traps, you go toting that many rebar stakes, that gets heavy and aggravating. So these little things here, a dozen of them, I think they cost like $1.25 a piece. They're very, very cheap. The results, I mean, they're not gonna come out of the ground. So that's what I use to, to drive down. And they, you do have to get a special driver. It just slides right over, it's a slotted driver. It's what they call a wolf thing, made by freaking brand. And I'll start it. Drive it down pretty much about three quarter way on coons. Pull your driver out, and then when you pull, and it sets, it's not coming out of the ground. I mean, it's, it's not happening. So, set our trap. Like I said, I use a lot of dried cat food, so I'm gonna put my cat food, and you don't have to put much. I put enough to where it's right up under the bottom of the trigger. You don't have to fill, you don't have to fill the trap up, by no means. Try to keep it as simple as you can, save bait. And then I'm gonna use, I got a little bit of, kind of a little homemade jelly recipe here. Put it around the rim. And then I take my, my vanilla that I got mixed up. It's basically half vanilla, half water. Shake it up good. I just spray about three squirts on there and that really enhances the smell and that attracts coons like crazy. So that's pretty much it on setting it. Uh, We'll go to another location, pretty much gonna make the same set coming up to the feeder. So we've come to the second spot that we was gonna set today, and this is actually a drain that leads up to the protein feeder uh, that I've got here. Uh, coons love ditches, drains, pond dams, slough edges, you know, anywhere there's water. They have to mix water with their food because they don't have saliva glands. A lot of people, that's, they don't know that, but that's the reason you'll always see coon tracks around ponds round sloughs, they love eating crawfish also. So anytime you got water, creek banks, you know, pond dams, anything like that, that's a good place to catch coons. But this is just old dry drain. When it rains hard, I mean, it does come through here. There's no water standing, but these coons really love using this drain going to the protein feeder. So what we're trying to do is cut them off before they get there. Instead of putting three or four traps, like I was talking about around the feeder, let's catch one at the feeder and let's catch, you know, some off the feeder. So we're gonna set one right here. Nothing really different about the set. Everything's gonna be the same. We're just in a different location. Uh, of course, always you wanna set on tracks. We would do do that here, but it rained night before last. There's not gonna be a lot of tracks here, but you know I've caught piles of coons here in the past, so it should be a pretty good spot. We got our cat food in there, so we're gonna put our put our jelly up. Let's get a little bit of that. Put around the rim. Don't take much. And we're gonna get our vanilla spray. I'll spray it down good. And we should be ready to go. All right. Maybe we'll have a coon in the morning. Okay, so. One simple step that I like doing, you know, in, in, in trapping, I buy, I love, these are pig skin leather gloves, they're real soft, they're thin, that way you can feel what you're doing with your fingers. I buy two sets. Generally at the beginning of every trapping season, I buy two pair, and I write bait on one of them, that's what I handle all my bait with. My other pair I keep on for making my sets, that way I'm not contaminating my trap, getting some type of bait or either my human scent on it. Because if you do, number one, they're not gonna approach it, if they do, they're gonna dig it up and you've wasted all that time. So run your two sets of gloves. That's just something minor, but it really, really works. You know, and, and even if you don't want to invest in that, buy some latex gloves. But once you get done making your set, pull those off before you set your bait and put a new pair on. 
So just a little small tidbit of information. So what we're looking at here, we got a, a property line edge pinching down. I left some trash here, basically just cover, you know, just nothing in particular. But I see a lot of coyote activity tracks and whatnot coming down through here and catching this drain and then going on out my property on somebody else's. So what I'm looking at here coming by, you know, something that catches my eye is this little, it's a young, some type of plant, with a little bit of growth. I'm wanting something for a backing, you know, something I'm gonna drill my dirt hole in here and this keeps that coyote from coming around behind. He's gonna have to approach this set from one way. That way you got him here, you know, where you can put his, he'll put his foot where you want it to versus him working the back of the set. You want something, and I'll show you when I said it, you want something, what you call a backing, behind a dirt hole to make the coyote approach from the way you want him to. So this right here really stands out to me. And it's, it's natural, it's not something we're gonna put here, it's already here, and we can get right here, you know, in this little drain, we're gonna make a dirt hole set and see if we can uh, pick a coyote up. So I do my dirt holes a little bit different than a lot of people. I use a little small shovel to make kind of, I guess it resembles kind of like a little small gopher. Just something with a little more, a little more eye appeal to it. It seems like I swapped that this past season and it has really, 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 really worked. Uh, just something different. Uh, standard dirt hole, you would just drill down in the ground with about a two inch auger or either you can, you can auger out and make a three-in-one tool that you can use. Nothing wrong with that. I still run a bunch of them, but this is something I was going to do just to show you, you know, something a little different. Add a little, little spin to it, especially if you got coyotes that have been uh, trapped or had anybody mess with them. This is something that, you know, maybe they haven't seen. It may just increase your... Now, now how, how, how deep are we uh, digging that hole? Uh, right here, probably going, you know, a foot right at it. But when I go to put my bait, I'll take this, uh, I'll take this three in one and I'll put me a smaller hole deeper. You know, that way you kind of have to force them, you know, to get your bait out. Now, what, what's the point? Why does a coyote rather, rather a trap? Or why would you rather put it down in a hole like that? Well, number one, you want it, you don't want it too deep, but you want it deep enough to where when he works his set, he just can't walk by there and just grab it and pull it out. You want him to have to, you know, with one leg, of course, he's dabbling around, he's got the other in there trying to get the bait out you know, stepping. So when I get ready to set my trap, there's a lot of people say hug the hole. I've done that and caught coyotes. I like coming back a little bit and then offsetting just a tad, basically like a, a six and three and put your pan to the right side. That's the way I do it. You can put it to the left side. I've caught tons of them hugging the hole. I mean, it's, it's there's no really right or wrong way where to put your trap, uh, but that's just what I like to do. And it seems like it, it works pretty good. same type of earth anchor that we use on the king traps. Just drive it, instead of driving about three quarters of the way down, I drive it all the way. Because of course, the bigger the animal, the more pressure they're gonna put on. Set it. This stuff at Walmart for a little bit of nothing. But I like getting my getting my trap set and putting my polyfill under the bottom. That way, when you sift in your dirt, your dirt don't get up under your pan and keeping it from firing. This trap right here has a night latch on it. So, all right, we're set notch out there for my ears just a little bit. We will be good to go. Main thing when you set in a trap, you want this trap to be bedded solid. If it has any type of movement in it, 
that canine, he, he's gonna touch it and dig it up, or either he's leaving, he's not gonna fool with it. Let's get a little bit of dirt out of here. So we're gonna sift in. Come in here, you see how the trap wants to teeter totter? We're gonna come in, we're gonna work the edges. We're gonna work in between our levers there. We're gonna get it to where it has no movement to it. Where it's solid. That way when he comes up here and works his set, it's not moving on him. Solid. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna now get our get our final layer of dirt on there. Blend it all in good before we apply our bait. I like finding my pan and make it the lowest spot. Coats ain't too wild about stepping on heels. So I try to make it the lowest spot and then barely, you wanna barely cover it. And we can take this dirt and we can scatter it, we can throw it, and do a little bit of whatever. I sometimes like using it. You can kind of halfway use some of the extras to funnel you, funnel your coyote where you want him to a degree. We won't get too crazy with it, but there we go. Should be ready for action right there. So we're getting ready to bait our trout and. Logan was asking me earlier, you know, what do you use? I mean, I don't have anything that I'm just 110% committed. I'm not committed to anybody or anything particular. Uh, this year, I did use a lot of uh, deer trimmings and seemed like it worked real well. I occasionally catch a beaver here and there, you know, and I'll use his hind quarters or back straps. You know, a beaver-based meat works real well. It has a particular scent, especially for cats. Um, you know, I, I generally, on my dirt holes, I run some type of bait and as i'll show you applying it and then i run a uh i run some type of lure you know and and run urine occasionally on my back and uh, not every time on this particular one we're not going to but uh we'll put our bait in here and it don't take a pile of it you ain't gotta get a lot we're gonna put that in there and put it as far down in there as we can i like smearing it that way it kind of kind of sticks to the to your dirt hole or inside the dirt hole rather and then on your on my on my lure here it honestly it takes very 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 little coyote sense of smell is so good you don't have to use much i put a little bit here on the back and, and then just drop my drop my stick with it down in there and uh hopefully tonight you know within the next couple of nights coyote come by here and we can pick him up before these does start dropping phones and the, Baby turkeys start getting laid and hatched and we can do some good. Mm -hmm. 